Uh, morning all. Right, today is a 30 STEM challenge special. Now, the 30 STEM challenge is the thing I started during lockdown when uh, I thought we all needed things to do. And I encourage people out into their gardens, mine is that way, um, to look hard and find 30 stems that they can snip and make a small arrangement for their own house and enjoy. And it is often the case that people walk around the gardens and they think there's nothing there to cut or they're nervous of cutting. And what I really like to do is encourage people to cut from their gardens because you won't break the garden. Often cutting will encourage new growth so that you'll get more for cutting next week or the week after. And um, I know because uh, you kind people come back to me, that sometimes the simple act of the 30 STEM challenge is quite transforming for people struggling with mental health issues, but also gets, gets more serious than that. Uh, people who are perhaps possibly looking for a new direction in life and suddenly you find that somebody starts with a 30 STEM challenge and before you know it, they become a florist. <laughs> <laughs> or a flower farmer, both of which are fantastic. And what I want to do in life is encourage people to grow more flowers, cut more flowers, engage more with their gardens. And the more we grow flowers, the more we encourage invertebrate life. And if we look after the invertebrates, come on, join in, those of you who've been here before, if we look after the invertebrates, the rest of the food chain will look after itself. So, Let's have a little 30 stem challenge special today. Uh, and I will tell you all sorts of top tips and tricks as we go. Now, if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still join my club. Here on the YouTube, I have a lovely club full of all sorts of fun people who uh, love nothing more than growing and cutting and arranging with flowers. So come along. The link to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. Right, enough of this. Let's go. Right, well, before I go out, very important, <coughs> tea cake. Wash the buckets. No, cook, cut, no good cutting flowers into dirty containers. So I will wash my bucket and then off we go. You're at a funny angle for something to say. Um, yes, yeah, so my buckets are very sturdy, uh, made by Oasis, who also make floral foam, which we don't use anymore. But the buckets are very fine, a good quality, strong, and available from any good florist wholesaler online you can look up and they'll sell them to anyone they're not just interested in you particularly in me because i'm a pro florist they'll sell them to anyone but a clean bucket clean cleanliness is next to godliness as you know now this clip was partly inspired by one of my club members um who asked a question for my live at five on thursday this week about stem counts for a wedding she's planning and obviously I'll answer that question in detail at the live at five but I thought um, this thing about the 30 stem challenge is slightly inspired by the way I work in that I know in advance how many stems are going to each of the of the arrangements I make I make thousands during the year and the way I can rationalize the work I do is by using stem counts, being able to count up what I'm going to cut in advance because it makes it much easier for me to manage my time. I know how many stems I can cut an hour. I know what I can put into a mix and so on and so on. Anyway, so I've got five buckets here because I'm going to make eight 30 stem challenges because I have a commission to make table centres for a a charity event tomorrow so I'm not just gonna make one so immediately I'm doing the kind of thing I would already do so if I'm what are eight threes 240 
24. Okay, so eight thirties are 240. I tend to put 50 stems in a bucket. So therefore, I've got five buckets because then I've got room for 250 stems, which is slightly more than I need, but that's okay. I could do what I normally do, which is cut 50 stems per variety into each bucket. And then I would have 250 stems and then I could easily make the 30 stem challenges. But I thought I'd make it more interesting. <laughs> and I'm going to use three stems per variety per posy. So if I make it, so I'm basically cutting in 24s. And if I'm, and I therefore need 10 varieties to cut. So 24 stems per variety of 10 different things, which as a flower farmer, I should be able to do. But I imagine in your garden, you might have 10 different plants that you could cut from at this time of year. When you make your 30 stem challenge after being inspired by this clip, I hope, um, do take a photograph of it and post it on your Instagram, if you're on Instagram, um, and tag me, Common Farm Flowers, at Common Farm Flowers, and the tag is hashtag 30 stem challenge, and I'll post some of the best ones on my stories. Um, I had somebody do a 30 stem challenge the other day from Hong Kong, which I found very exciting. I love, I love it when things come in from around the world. Anyway, so if I'm going to cut 10 varieties, what kind of varieties might I have? Well, yes, I'm a flower farmer, so I have lots to choose from, but come on, let's go around the garden and see what we can find which you may, might have similarly. For example, it's June, so you might have roses. You might have Alcamilla mollis. You might have some really nice foliage. You might have a few annuals in flower. What have you got? You don't have to have 10 times three. You could have three times 10 for your 30 stem challenge. But let's go and have a look and see what we can find. Right. Oh, this is very fiddly. Doesn't always work. Off. Off. God, it's annoying. Right, we're starting off in the tunnel. We're almost at peak tunnel. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely bursting. I have to say, I'm very excited. And my um, friend Arlo Guthrie was here last the evening before last filming in here with a drone it was very exciting so that'll be coming up on here when he sem sends me the clip um i've grown poppies in here not because i'm cutting them as cut flowers but because i'm using the se i'm going to cut the seed heads and use the seed heads so that's why uh right i've got lots i can cut in here i'm going to save the white i've got a white wedding to cut after i've done this so uh obviously not all the white <laughs> but i think i can manage 24 brightly colored sweet peas 24 ami majors i'm going to leave the lavatera because i've got lovely roses so i'm going to cut the roses and i kind of want to have something that other people might uh have something similar i don't want it to look too far from what you might have in your garden because i want to inspire you to go into your garden and cut 30 stems um but i also have hidden down there some lovely pink snapdragons uh i'm going to cut some ami bapleurum all sorts of bits and pieces so i'm gonna have a little cut in here and we'll see we see where we get to i'm standing here with one larkspur um because if i put too much larkspur in my 30 stem challenge it will it, for me, it might overwhelm the look. These are going to be table centres at a party and they're quite tall, but I like the movement. So I'm going to cut one of these for each of these posies. So when you're cutting your 30 stem challenge, you can think, I'm, I'm just going to have one of that to be an accent or a sort of little flourish, like a, you know, I'll look like Queen Camilla wearing a fascinator on my hat. 
um, that's what my posies will look like. So do you, you don't have to have three of everything or five of everything or ten of everything. I, some of mine are going to be ones. And that's what's so great about just walking around the garden and being inspired by what there is, is you can think, oh, that one is perfect. I'll just have one. Of all the sweet peas I grow, this one is my favourite this year. It's called Nimbus. N-I-M-B-U-S. And so for the sweet peas, I've cut plenty. <laughs> I may have overcut a little bit. You don't have to be too exact. Um, and I've gone for sort of lilacs and blues and pinky colours, rich colours, because I'm saving all the whites for this wedding. And so my mix, luckily my client doesn't mind what I do for them. So it seems to me that I'm going for a sort of pinky, bluey, lilac-y colour, which I think will be very attractive. Right, I'm filming one-handed. Easier said than done. And to go with those tall larkspur, I think I'll do three tall spikes. So larkspur, snapdragons, and what will be my third spike? Who knows? We haven't seen it yet. If you don't have space for Alcamilla mollis as a perennial, then Bupleura makes a lovely annual and look at the, it's got a very good zingy green to it. I'm very keen on this. I sowed this in my tunnel years and years ago. And to be honest, it just self sows itself every year and I opportunistically cut the crop. Um, I love it. So it's uh, the 7th of June um, and it's time to start cutting the biennials that I sowed mid-June last year. I'm going to be making a biennial workshop, which you'll be able to order as a download. Um, as a, an inspiration for how to grow these lovely things like foxgloves. This is Dianthus, uh, Sweet William, Sweet Rocket, all sorts of behind me. I've got some um, Canterbury Bells about to flower. I've already ripped out the wallflowers, they're done. The honesty has been fantastic. I'm about to harvest the honesty seed heads for using at Christmas, having cut quite a lot of the flowers. So they're very, very useful um, biennials as a crop to bring you through the early part of the season. Anyway, the Sweet William are, about, are just beginning to flower. So I think we better have eight of the, 24 of these for my little posies. Here's another biennial, lovely to cut. cut. Uh, Sweet Rocket, Hesperus matronalis to you, madam. Um, and with my purpley, bluey, pinky mix, I think this will be lovely. So I'm going to have 24 of these. Just say yes to a handful of popping nigella. Now, I always say this. If you're cutting into a trolley, always park your trolley in the shade while you're cutting. If you're cutting for your own 30 stem challenge and you're only cutting 30 stems, take a little bucket of water out to the garden with you and cut straight into the water. Otherwise, particularly on a sunny day like today, your stems might flop and we don't want you to be disappointed. So take your snips, take your a, a container full of water around the garden with you and cut into it. I know where I am with this because I'm cutting a bit more. It's always the way. I am a professional florist and grower, so I, you know, I'm not being competitive, <laughs> very. Anyway, uh, so what I've done, as I said at the beginning, I cut 50 stems to a bucket. So actually this time I'm cutting 24 stems per variety. So I've cut 22 varieties into each bucket. So I've got my Hesperus, my Nigella, my Bupleurum, my Sweet Rocket, my Ami Magus, my Sweet Peas, and just to knock the counting out of the park, my little spiky people here. And um, my third spike that I'm going to have for this mix is going to be Poppy from outside, because I have my, uh, they're called, um, they're opium poppies. They're not opium poppies, but I call them opium poppies. Anyway, they're very big, blousy red poppies. They are over and their flower stems, the seed head stems are really attractive. So I'm gonna go and get 24 of those, pop them in here, and then I'm gonna put this lot 
in the studio to get it in the cool while I go up the field to cut a few more bits. Right, I'm up here for roses, mint and alcamilla mollis, and then I'm done. And for your posy, if you're doing a 30 stem challenge, don't feel like you have to have lots of big accent flowers. Actually, I think what makes a posy is variety. Lots of different bits and pieces. So even if you have one different stem of each variety, or three of something, one of something, five of something else, you can easily, I promise you, go for it. Make a 30 stem challenge. I'm going to pick, I, I'm lucky I've got lots of different kinds of roses, but if I were a normal garden, I might have three roses with three different colours. So rather than pick 24 of one kind, I'm going to cut eight each of three different kinds. Because remember, I'm making eight posies. So my posies are going to have three different roses in each one. Does that make sense? Um, and I'm not going to cut them too open because my posies are for a dinner tomorrow night. So 24, 36 hours from now. So if I cut them really blown like this, they won't last. So I'm looking more because of the timings. I'll cut it and show you. Here we go. This is um, gentle Hermione. And she's had a bird poo on her. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's about right for tomorrow night. Okay, let's get cutting. There's eight gentle Hermione. You could just have eight gentle Hermione in a posy and not have anything else, really. Eight Bosca Bell. Oh yes, if only there was smell -a vision And eight James Austin held by the neck because they need their thorns taking off. Now, officially, I'm done. But there's always an added bonus, isn't there, when you're walking around a garden and you've been keeping an eye out for the good stuff. Well, here in the long grass behind me, can you see there's a sort of haze of rusty colour on top of the grass? Well, that's wild sorrel brain catching up and wild sorrel makes a lovely bouncy spiky addition to your floristry if you can if you have a bit of long grass and you spot some wild sorrel cut it a really absolutely stunning extra. So I'm only going to have one per posy. I know I've cut more than eight. I know I've cut more than eight, but I've, you know, only one per posy. And it'll give my posies a sort of weedy look, <laughs> which I really like. And um, a meadowish feel. And they will be clearly, and my client will like this, clearly not imported from across the world because you can't import these. So, chuck these in the bucket. Let's get back to the studio. Right, there are my eight times 30 stems and they're now in the cool of the studio and I'm just going to let them have a bit of a drink before I make my posies. Right, so the flowers have a nice drink for a couple of hours. Um, when I cut in the tunnel, it's quite warm, even quite early in the morning and 
Sometimes things look a little bit floppy. Chances are, if you're doing a 30 stem challenge, you're probably not cutting from a tunnel. Uh, but if you cut, whatever time of day you cut, ideally, if you can feel the sun on the back of your head, if it's hot, probably wait. If you can cut in the evening or the morning, when it's cooler, that's a good idea. Try and cut straight into water. And then if things are looking a bit tired from the, from the cutting process, and this ami sometimes looks a bit floppy when it's been cut, and equally the bupleurum sometimes doesn't like being cut a bit, um, pop it straight into water, get it out of the sun, let it have a drink, and then it'll recover. I just leave it, you know, if you spend too much time paying attention, flowers are like sulky children. If you pay attention to the sulks, they think, aha, the sulk is being rewarded with attention and so I will sulk more. Flowers, very similarly, uh, ignore the sulk, expect them to pull themselves together, and sooner or later they forget their sulking, et voila, and they're all fine. So I'm gonna make a, um, I was gonna put my, <laughs> this is my new clipper, which means I can turn the phone, turn the uh, filming on and off, very sophisticated. Anyway, I'm gonna make a 30 stem challenge so you can see me do it. Um, and then I'll make the rest of them. <laughs> Never go anywhere but that's a cool post pocket. Um, and then I'll make the rest of them uh, and show them afterwards. But I thought you might like to see one 30 step challenge because I want you, yes, your garden, your kitchen table needs you to go out into your garden with a pair of snippety snips and do a 30 step challenge this very weekend. They do. So this is how I'm gonna do it. And it's really simple. One, I'm gonna count. I don't really need to count though, because I've cut, I know what I've cut. I've cut three of everything per posy, and I've got about 10 ingredients. So I don't need to cut, I don't need to count too much. But anyway, start with the Alcamilla Mollis. Love the Alcamilla, look at it, it gets my apron, very fine. Alcamilla. Beautiful nigella. If you've got stems like this, which have got lots of stems on them, you can always strip um, and uh, split them up so that they can become more than one stem. I'm going to use them all as one, all at one. I'm going to be careful not to get too tall because these are going to be table centres. And if they're too tall, then the people across the tables won't be able to see each other. This is still too tall, so I'm going to take some more off. And you'll see as I go that I really um, make sure that all the stems, I take off all the spare side shoots and leaves and so on, because I don't want them to literally muddy the water. I want the water to stay clean. And these posies are being collected tomorrow morning, so... I will uh, probably give them clean water before tomorrow. Anyway, two. Three. Four. They're gonna be they're gonna be lovely hot colours. I shall light. I might turn you around because I think the light is <gasps> Look at me picking you up and swinging you around over here. I think the light will be better, but I want you to see the buckets. Oh, look at that. You can see everything. Okay, and the light's better. So, right, one, two, three, four. Fabrizio outside. Five. And again, I don't want this to be too tall, so I'm going to strip off it. Six. The poppy seed heads I was talking about. Very pretty. Seven. Lovely sweet pea. Eight. 
Let's have three of them. Nine. Ten. Ooh, let's have some roses. Eleven. Thirteen mint fourteen fifteen sixteen and I'm almost at the whizzing round stage now. Two more of these gorgeous nigella. Seventeen. Eighteen. Two more of the. Just coming along. Two more of the sweet rocket. Nineteen. Twenty. One. So remember, I had one each of the uh, snapdragons, the poppy seed heads, and the. Love spur. So here's my snap. Can't remember where I got to. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty one. One, twenty-two, Twenty-six. Added bonus, the wild sorrel. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. It's a miracle. Twenty-nine. Thirty. I actually got the maths right. And uh, I have actually got 30 stems per... 30 stems per posy. Now, this is quite a fat posy. But, isn't it pretty? Make a nice table centre. I'm going to tie it up with raffia. This is going to be very short because it's a table centre. So you might make a 
much taller 30 stem challenge. The idea is the 30 stems, not necessarily the size. And I have jammed all this quite fat material together because it's got to fit on a table. Just gonna snip the stems off. And I'm not, cut it. I'll cut them shorter tomorrow when, before they're picked up. Clean stems, very important. And they're hardly going to fit in their jam jars. So it's a bit too tall for the jam jar. Tomorrow it'll get shut, it'll, look, it's wobbly. <laughs> it's not sitting straight. So tomorrow I will cut a little bit more off it. But you can imagine that it is not too tall for me be able to, to be able to talk to the person across the table. Plus it's quite a nice, cheerful thing for this event. Et voila. So I'm now going to make all eight and I'll show them to you when you're done. But that's your 30 stem challenge, okay chaps and chapesses and anyone else in between. Go out into your gardens this weekend and I challenge you to cut 30 stems and they can be all different, some different. You could have 30 roses, you could have grasses, oak leaves, laurel, seed heads, anything you like. But let's see your 30 stem challenges for this weekend. Right, that's enough for the moment. I'll put this down and I'm gonna make some more. <laughs> Gotta find them. Right there we have eight posies, all set to be boxed up and collected tomorrow. They are all a little tall. So I will tomorrow morning give them all fresh water. I might actually give them actually fresh jars. I have a large collection of jam jars. So I'll wash up eight more jars, fill them with water and then these will have their stems snipped and they will sit very flat. So they'll be really short. Ideally, table centers are not taller than your elbow that to your fist. So these are kind of okay, but I'll take another inch off them when I put them in clean, in clean vases tomorrow. Because otherwise, if you're sitting here talking to the person over there and this is sort of hedge in front of you, it's kind of annoying. I mean, you know, dinners are fun and exciting. And it's the people who make them fun and exciting, not so much. I mean, the flowers are an added bonus. But, uh, added bonus, not. You know, maybe people talk about them. But, you know, maybe there are plenty of other things to talk about. Meanwhile... As tablescaping ideas go, if you were having a big old posh dinner, you could just have a mass of jam jar posies in a circle for a round table or a long line for a long table. And it does look stunning. Stunning. You could have candles in the middle here or, you know, it's a good way to do it. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this little clip. It's time for me to go and fetch somebody from school. <laughs> um, and I hope you'll go out with your snips and have a rave up in the garden this weekend. Whether you cut 30 stems, 50 stems, 300 stems, whatever. Have fun and share your 30 stem challenges, I hope, on your Instagram feeds if you do Instagram tagging common farm flowers at common farm flowers with hashtag 37 challenge and i'll keep an eye out and share some of them on my stories thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you feel inspired and i will see you all very soon bye